Good evening, fellow aviators. This is your future captain speaking, Jetta, and welcome back to my podcasting adventures. Um, last week's, I received quite a bit of feedback once more, saying to keep continuing these, um, which is super amazing. I'm super excited for this newfound adventure because it's really kind of built upon the foundation of I really want everybody to understand and comprehend that they have the ability to uh, keep going and pursue their dreams. Anything is possible. So this week was, I did a poll on my Instagram story as usual, and the background color is purple. So thank you to all of my favorite people that chose purple. And this week I will put a little bit more different options um, I kind of want to keep a cool diary, I guess, of colors. So, um, with that being said, the topic for this week was, it's a surprise. So, the coolest thing I could probably come up with has to do with talking about my initial solo flight. I know I kind of briefly touched on this on my first, in my first podcast but I, I really feel like my, my story behind my initial solo is quite interesting. So flight training has its ups and downs, definitely. And I try to share with you the most authentic, um, authentic dose of flight training, I guess you could say. But this experience has been relatively interesting and the experience of my first solo has stuck within my heart for the longest time and I like to write blog posts about it I like to talk about it and kind of give a little bit more detail as to what happened however within the recent semester I've kind of forgotten about my initial solo and um Kind of this heartfelt moment, this connection that I got. I'll explain that in the foreseeable future in this uh, podcast. But I've kind of forgotten because I've been so busy, you know. I'm going to get my private pilot's license in the next few weeks, which is super exciting. But really, the backbone of my training was last semester. And this experience, my initial solo experience, has been what's kept me going. Because I can definitely see so much promise in the future with being a pilot and achieving my dreams. And so much happiness, uh, you know, outside of training. It's going to be joyful. So my initial solo, I'll just kind of give a little background um my initial solo was probably the biggest miracle I've had in my life and you know these it's funny because I decided Sunday as a day to kind of release these podcast podcasts not because I can kind of title it streamliner Sundays after you know, the Boeing 787 Dreamliner, which I'm so fascinated with, it's it's really because I want to dive deeper and take some time out of my week to really share these experiences. But anyways, so I, my initial solo, um, let me first explain what initial solo is. So the initial solo is your first solo ever. So my first solo ever happened on December 10th, 2022, which it, it kind of seems like a long time ago, but it was just a few months ago. And I was looking back on my timeline of photos this past, these past few days and thinking, what can I talk about? What can I talk about? But the one thing that beamed back in my face and hit me hard was the initial solo. So December 10th, 2022 was probably the most memorable day that I will ever have. So I soloed at St. George Regional Airport 
It is in southern Utah, way south of Salt Lake City. It's south of Cedar City. Beautiful airport. So pretty. I, I find St. George fascinating because you're landing alongside larger planes and being able to kind of figure out um, sequencing and everything. It's just a fun experience, but the landscape around that airport is so pretty. It's the red rocks and the, there's actually Sand Hollow. Sand Hollow's not too far away from the airport. So if you extend your downwind far enough, you can actually like go into Sand Hollow. It's, it's pretty, pretty cool. So, and being able to see these locations from a different perspective versus just cars, you know, um, some people might drive UTVs through there, but being able to see it other than standing on the ground, feet planted on the ground is just, it's this unimaginable experience. You know, you're flying in, you can imagine flying in, um, with the anticipation of, oh my goodness, I'm going to go solo here in a few minutes. But uh, it's really the process and the timing is so rewarding. But anyways, St. George Regional Airport. I was super excited. Not nervous at all, surprisingly. Um, so I did my takeoffs and landings with my instructor. And he's like, okay, you're solo. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? What am I... What am I doing? But, um, and I remember there's always this famous saying that, that always, always gets brought up. And it's, don't forget your training. <laughs> I have, I have a really, really good friend of mine. He, he loves to use this phrase. Don't forget your training. And it's so true because if you rely on what you already know as, as a pilot and build up on that obviously but on your initial solo just remember your training that's probably my biggest advice as well as everybody else's but anyways so I started taxiing down the taxiway and I was like wow this is this is a neat experience something that I didn't personally think that I would ever make it this far to experience and by make it this far, I mean like training and college and everything. But um, it, this was an experience that made me a firm believer in, in um, the word alone and how it's fake. So it, being able to, you know, taxi down that taxiway. I was like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, I'm really solo. I'm solo, I'm alone, but. So I get to the whole short line, make my radio call, clear final, you know, I've been clearing final the whole time, making sure, okay, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Waiting for this guy to take off. And I get this thought like, this is gonna be the best flight of your life. I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah, please, please make it okay. So, um, I'm ready to take off. And the, the initial moment my wheels, the tricycle gear left the, the, uh, the runway, I had realized I'm really floating. <laughs> I'm, I'm floating on a miracle. It, you know, the freedom of flight, I always use that as kind of like a backup, so to speak, of, you know, flying is freedom, freedom is flight. But it, I never tasted true freedom until I that those wheels left the ground. And so I was so focused. I was focused. I was like, oh my goodness, this is, it's all me. But... When I turned crosswind, I remember turning crosswind and I suddenly looked over to my right and the seat was empty. But I still had this calming reassurance that the seats weren't empty. And so, you know, um, I cleared downwind and turned downwind 
and I look behind me for a brief second, of course, super quickly, and there's no one there. But I had this feeling, this reassuring feeling that I wasn't alone. And so I kind of want to bring up this concept of, well, what is alone? What, what does that word mean? So kind of, the dictionary kind of explains the word alone as without somebody present. Somebody or someone present. But I, in my personal opinion and from this experience, I believe that word should be knocked out of the dictionary. It, sh it shouldn't exist. The word alone should not exist. But I had such an amazing experience that day from, I don't know who, but I'm a firm believer that somebody indeed was sitting next to me. It was not um, someone with a physical body, but I definitely know that I wasn't alone. So midfield downwind, you know, clear and everything, everything's looking good. Turning base and turning final. Oh boy, oh boy, this is crazy. So I'm like, it's my first landing without my instructor <laughs> in the uh, cockpit. But, so I said, okay, two white, two red, you're good. <laughs> my motto is four white, you got height. Um, what is it, four red, you're dead. But two white, two red, that's what my CFI said. I don't know. It's just mnemonics to help me remember. But I remember coming in on final. Okay, perfect wide slope, perfect wide slope. And flare, 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 touchdown. Perfect. Full stop. Um, and then time to take off again. And so those three laps in the pattern went so fast. And before I knew it, my solo had come to an end. But did it really come to an end? That was a definite no. However, I realized something about the aircraft that day. And the aircraft, the concept of flying is so beautiful. It's like something so intricate. And a simple principle like flying you know it's simple but it's not that simple it's so complex but the fact that Wilbur and Orville Wright were able to come up with that theory that idea and process their knowledge into an actual full-scale model and fly it was amazing and so while I was up in the air I sure I was so focused but these thoughts came to my mind and, and I learned three things. Number one, you no one is ever alone. No one is ever, ever alone. And it's, it's so amazing. And I really kind of want to bring into, into some light that, you know, um, God has our backs. We're, we're in, we live in such an amazing world and anything is possible so the second thing i learned was the principles of flight and the idea of flying the feeling when you realize you're however many feet above ground you know you're coming in for a landing you're taking off it's amazing it's so freedom inducing serotonin raising it's beautiful it's one of the greatest things, I think, on this planet. And the third thing I learned is definitely that I can do anything. I think oftentimes as humans, we kind of, I don't know, brush off the fact that, yeah, I, it's a dream of mine. But can I do it? I don't know. I don't know. But it's the mentality of, Oh my goodness, this is so scary. I don't know if I can do it. However, just by just sitting down and doing it and accomplishing it and the end feeling, there's nothing like it. 
And I, I definitely remember that a lot of people, like, after my initial solo, they would ask, well, were you scared? Were you worried? Did you have any, like, negative thoughts? Could this happen? Would this happen to me? Could that happen to me? You know, could I, am I going to make the runway? <laughs> of course not. I had no negative feelings. I had no sick feelings, no nervousness. I was super calm and that there was nothing unlike that experience. I, it was the most riveting, impactful um, thing I've ever done. And I, I want to share these experiences with you guys to prove that you can do anything you put your mind to. But there's also so much we can learn from the tiniest moments. And honestly, the biggest experience that I've had was that solo. But the most influential part was that initial cr turn of crosswind that I was like oh my goodness I am not alone I am not alone I know exactly what to do I I thought my mind thought so clearly that's how I could put it there was no fog there was no nervousness it was calm and all I could hear was my voice and the airplane engine, and I had it all. But, and that first initial landing was the biggest, biggest, biggest overall impact of this whole thing. Because that sense of accomplishment of, yeah, I really can do this. I really can fly a plane. Look, they, and of course they wouldn't send you if you weren't ready. But the way I took it as is I really can do it. I really will make a good pilot. I am flying this. I have my hands on the controls and and I'm the it I'm the sole occupant pilot in command. I am getting pilot in command time. And the influence that my initial solo had over me has definitely encouraged me, even on my worst of days, to continue on with flying. And I know there's so many people out there that like hearing about my experiences, and I really appreciate that. But, like, this isn't a diary for me to write down or express my feelings for things. I have a different, I have like an actual diary for that, but I really want to share these experiences and share these goals and accomplishments with you guys because I feel like these, these days aviation is a lost world. We've kind of become the Atlantis of the skies and it's so tough for me to see that. I have so many friends who were in the military who um, retired, I mean, retired Air Force pilots, retired Navy pilots. I know a lot of these people and it's so amazing to see their faces light up when they find out that you, that I want to be a pilot. It's, aviation's kind of a long lost world and it breaks my heart but even if you aren't interested in aviation, I really appreciate you for taking the time to dive into my content. But I really want to share the raw details and what's happening. So then you can understand that anything is possible. I never, ever in my entire life believed I could solo a plane. But I did it. And I have ten and a half flight hours of piling command which is crazy to me, but I love every experience that this has brought forth. It hasn't all been positive. There's been a lot of negative, but 
I must say that everything is worth it in the end, even when you think it's not. And just the, just the, I'll get into a little bit about my solo cross country, but just the freedom of, you know, you're the sole occupant, you're the pilot in command, you're flying 150 nautical miles plus to an airport that you really haven't been to before and you fly back at an altitude of 10,500 feet. There's nothing more beautiful than seeing the landscape at 10,500 feet and how tiny we are and how tiny our houses are. But I just wanna make my point clear that perspective is the biggest, the biggest um, dream maker and the biggest dream crusher. If you have the right perspective in and the right mindset, then you're gonna you're gonna go far. You're gonna go way, way far. But that's just kind of what I wanted to touch on this week. Those were some of my small thoughts that I had. I've been reflecting a lot on my initial solo and trying to figure some things out. Um, but as far as that goes, thank you guys for tuning in and listening to these. Uh, happy Sunday. And I hope you guys all have a good week. But please visit my Instagram and Facebook to vote on that poll. It is on my Instagram and Facebook story. You just read the question and click which one you think would be super cool. But, um, oh, also, coming up, I have a few surprises. I'm super excited, so stay tuned. I am actually going to be going somewhere, and I will be having a lot of podcasts about that place. I'm super, super excited. Also, last thing, happy baseball season. Baseball's back. I'm super excited. I hope you are. But um, happy first part of March. Enjoy. And I will see you guys next week.